Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about all of the latest and the greatest in PlayStation 4 homebrew news and much, much more. Today is episode two of Back to Basics. So what is Back to Basics, you might be asking? Well, I think of it as an opportunity to go back and kind of refresh our knowledge of the PlayStation 4 jailbreaking scene and help new folks get their systems ready, as well as dive a little bit deeper into the functionality that the jailbreak has that you may not have taken advantage of just yet. So today we're gonna do an A to Z of payloads. So every payload, or at least most of the significant payloads, I'm gonna be just simply explaining what they are. So I hope you find something out of this useful. And again, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. So what does the app dumper do? The app dumper just simply dumps your apps or really your games to a USB stick. Typically you run this payload and then go into the game. And as long as you have a USB storage device attached to your PlayStation 4, well, then it will start dumping it to your USB drive. So next up here is app to USB. So basically you can offload an app or a game to your USB storage device. And whenever you run it from your PlayStation 4 system menu, then it runs directly off of the USB device. Next up is backup. And for the backup.bin, all this is going to do is it is going to make a backup of your database. And so next up is disable ASLR. And so ASLR stands for address space layout randomization. And so this disables that. And typically this is used for doing things like working with memory more easier or repeatable. Again, primarily a thing for developers. Now we have disable two decks and this basically reverses the action that converts your target ID to deck. So this is really useful if you wanna play fake package games with debug trophies that are already installed on them. Again, there is a disable one here and there is also an enabled one. And we have disable updates. And so what this will do is that this will block accidental software updates permanently. So if someone happens to go into system software and tries to update your PlayStation 4, then it will not work. And again, with most of these, there is source code that's available. So for the disable updates, if you look at the source code for that, basically they create folders that the PlayStation 4 cannot write to when it tries to do a system update. Enable browser is also one that is a bit old. And what this one did was, was that it permanently activated your browser without having to sign in to the police station network. Again, if you are running system software 9.00, and I believe even some of the lower firmwares, then this is no longer an issue. Next up for enable updates, basically this does the opposite of the disable updates and allow Sony to write back into the updates folder so you could update your system to the very latest system software if you wanted to. Next up is exit-idu and if you're wondering what IDU stands for, it stands for individual display unit. So think of a demo kiosk. And in this instance, it exits out of that mode and it restarts the console. Fake USB is also one that's a bit old. And what this one does is, is that it makes your internal hard disk drive into a USB storage device. So basically you could create a folder on your internal hard drive and you could put package files into that. And then once you run the payload here, then you could install packages directly from that folder. And it would think it's just a USB drive, when in reality, it's just on your internal hard disk drive. Next list with everything that is fan-speed, these just simply allow you to control the speed of your fan. So there is 50, 55, there's 60, 65, 70, 75, and then 80. And then there is also a default fan speed that you could run. And then there is this one right here, which is just called fan threshold. And again, this one right here just allows you to control the cooling speed of the fan. FTP allows your PlayStation 4 to be turned into an FTP server. 
This is also not really needed anymore since Goldhen already comes with FTP support. Next up is Game Dumper, and this allows you to dump games to your USB stick. So we did cover App Dumper a little bit earlier today. Obviously, with App Dumper, you would probably just use that to dump apps. And then with Game Dumper, you would use that to dump games. I've done it both ways before, and I haven't noticed much of a difference. So just keep that in mind. So next up is History Blocker. This is probably one of the most relevant payloads here in 2022, simply because this toggles the automatic loading of the last page that is used in the web browser. So definitely something you probably want to use for the 9.00 exploits that we currently have. The kernel clock here, this changes the internal clock of the PlayStation 4. So this can be used to reactivate license and for different features. The kernel dumper here, it basically dumps your device's kernel from memory to a USB device. Next up is the Linux payload. So there is a Linux 1 gigabyte, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And what these allow you to do is to run Linux on your PlayStation 4. I have a video just dedicated to this topic using Gen 2 as well as Arch Linux if you want to check those out. The module dumper.bin that's listed here, so this dumps the decrypted modules from a slash system or a slash system underscore ex or slash update in the root of the file system to a USB device. Again, this is something that's a little bit more interesting probably to those that are working on the different exploits rather than the end users. The permanent UART, basically it enables hardware-based UART without a kernel patch, and this also persists through updates. Again, not really anything for the end users here. PS4 debug is typically used to mod different types of games. You can also do things like mount save game data, or it's even used to activate PlayStation network accounts. Restore.bin does the opposite of the backup.bin, and that is that it restores your database backup. Riff Renamer, this one changes the license type of installed games from false to true. So you can use this to resolve games that won't work with the normal hen payloads. 2dex does the opposite of what the disabled 2dex did. And so this removes the target ID that was set to dext. Again, this was useful if you have fake package games with debug trophies installed on them. Toolbox.bin comes up, and even though I wouldn't put this as one of the core payloads that's at least in things such as the Scene Collective, which I'll put a link to below, this is really just Orbis Toolbox. So again, you can do things like display the title ID of a game on your system menu and other debugging functionality. Typically very useful for developers. And then web RTE, and this is basically for game trainers. So maybe you want to add a number of coins to your character, or maybe you want infinite health or a few other things. Web RTE is typically how you get there. And then there are two more items. One of them is obviously Gold Hen. Gold Hen, if you are on 9.00, it is going to be what you would probably use to do things such as enable debug settings, install, load games, run different types of homebrew. It has a bin loader server that's already baked into it, as well as FTP and much, much more. And you may also run across Mira Loader. So Mira Loader does basically the same sort of things that Gold Hen does, but it was very popular in the earlier days of the PlayStation 4. So I used it when I was around 6.72 constantly, but Gold Hen is pretty much the standard that you would want to use today, especially if you've got a 9.00 system. And if you have a PlayStation 4 that's on an earlier version than 9.00 and you want to update it to 9.00, back to basics episode one, I talked about how you could do that step by step.
So thank you so very much for watching. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you on the next one. Michael, out!